Well, so cymatics would be the closest thing in a physical medium that we could use in order to visualize the material um, shifting and creating more coherent geometries. Some people work with salt, some people work with Sedona Red Rock, you know, some people work with shungite powder. Each one of these types of powdered uh, minerals will potentially have a different impact when the frequency, when different frequencies are applied to them. So this geometry is from the plasmoid unification model is now getting imprinted into the electromagnetic field and the EMF mic is proving it. So can I see someone's uh, cell phone again? Can I see your cell phone? And then we'll just we'll just put the phone into the field. Look at that. <laughs> so this is so this is this is your brain. This is your brain on EMF. <laughs> Don't do EMF. <laughs> just kidding. You can do it. Just you know, create some boundaries. Yeah, yeah, nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Sorry? It, with permission of the owner. Is it, can we pass this around? Okay, yeah, so you're the one who came up with the idea. <laughs> it's your responsibility if it goes missing. <laughs> it's such a special thing, and I have to thank the Matsumoto family for, for entrusting her with the project. Far in the universe, nuclear collapses very often take place by the gravitational force after stars consume their fuel. Since the electromagnetic force is about 40 orders of stronger than the gravitational force, it should be easy to induce similar nuclear collapses by the electromagnetic force in laboratory. But we never knew until now how to do that. Recently, the author, Dr. Takaaki Matsumoto, a nuclear, uh, discovered a nuclear collapse which was induced by the electromagnetic force in laboratory during studying the mechanisms of so-called cold fusion phenomena. Several kinds of nuclear reaction which were directly induced by the electromagnetic force called electronuclear reactions, ENRs, were found so far to occur in a special state of hydrogen clusters called itonic clusters, or micro ball lightning. The nuclear collapse was one of the most remarkable reactions among ENRs called the electronuclear collapse. Furthermore, very amazingly, completely broken materials by ENC were found to be regenerated to thin tubes and films of conventional elements such as carbon, oxygen, and iron. The latter process is called electronuclear regeneration. So those are your crenelated spheres? Okay, on the subject of the crenelated spheres. In several systems, if you have, <clears throat> at, at the bottom of a, a, a yin vortex, uh, you are, in my view, at that point, you're twisting the ether in such a way that at that point, it starts to unravel matter. So in my presentation, I showed you this structure where I pl placed a Mars gas, which has a special component in there, uh, which is released when you burn the gas. And that produces this magnetohydrodynamic structure and it has a vector down to a point where there's like, a, it's a torsion field and it has a focus where on, in, in the structure of the physical vacuum at a quantum scale uh, on a toroidal level above, there's the interaction between that vector and the toroidal vector, of the, uh, the structure of the physical vacuum above, okay? And at that point, it literally unwinds matter and that's the yin pulling force. It desires to take from the environment to create life. Okay, so uh, that is disrupting matter. Now, any matter in that position will have the hidden matter within the energy ripped from it. And this is what Nina Kalagina was doing when she was using psi force, which we have the capability to use. She was able to move material around, but she was also able to stop the heart of a frog and restart the heart of a frog with her intention through her hands. And then when one of her colleagues said, well, you know, I'm not really believing this, you know, try and do it to me, uh, she did it and sent him into cardiac arrest. And they had to do CPR. So that's extracting chi. 
And it's just sad because there's two horrendous weapons that are possible with this technology that almost certainly have been developed and you, you don't, don't know it's even possible, but it, in certain circles it's just accepted as part of things you can do, right? So um, it's able to extract that. And what happens when you extract that hidden energy within the matter? The electrons just fall off and the matter starts disassembling. And it disassembles in the most, in my view, most stable nucleon clusters. So it, it, disassembles, in, it disassembles into protons, uh, helium alpha particles, and carbon. So, uh, because you're changing the most, the distortion of the physical vacuum, and you get your, all energy comes from uh, a difference in uh, change in the distortion of the physical vacuum. It doesn't matter whether it's chemical energy or nuclear energy. Okay, so, but I can tell you, our experiment called Ultra Experiment, it's highly well defined. A three-year-old can learn to conduct it and, and do the experiment within seven minutes. It works 100% of the time if you follow the instructions, and you get lighter and heavier elements, and I wasn't blown up. It's called the least action process, right? So the yang side, that's the brighter light in your Masonic temples. You had the sun force in all of the ancient religions, right? The swastika, right? That disassembles and unwinds the trapped light, okay? Then it can be unwound in such that the, the connection between the clusters in the particular nucleus fall apart based on their strength of binding, Okay. Then it goes through a wormhole, which is in page 91 in Matsumoto's book, which he worked out from 11 years of his research. Okay. Goes through the wormhole, comes through to the yin. So the yang is disassembling matter. It goes through a wormhole. It's not interacting with any matter. This is literally able to go through all of the matter you can possibly imagine without interaction. And the wormhole connects the center of the yin to the center of the yang? Yes. You getting it? And on the other side, uh, on the yin, it, it assembles matter. So there, in this particular experiment, which I think ran for 90 seconds or 300 seconds, one or the other, um, on that particular side, you don't want to run it long because it gets confused. This is confused, right? <laughs> There's lots of experiment things that went on all over the place, over and over and over again. So it, gets, it, it ends up being homogenous. It just looks like rock. Okay. So it comes around the other side, and on that side, inside the Visica Pisces inside the golden ratio line, there is exactly a two-armed spiral galaxy structure, which was replicated by other parties. And on inside those place, places, but it's not that the magatam is up here and then the other side it's land there. It is the 69. It is the yin-yang, even on that level. It literally looks like a six and a nine. Um, on, on that side, there was calcium and no boron. So if it's a contamination in the system and the, both vortexes are the same, you should see calcium and boron here and calcium and boron here, but you don't. You see boron here with no calcium, which is aluminium minus oxygen, and over here you see uh, uh, aluminium plus oxygen, which is some isotopes of calcium in the absence of boron, and that is the yin side, the creative force in the universe. You literally cannot have a universe which does not have yin and yang. And because it's fractal, every yang has a yin and a yang, and every uh, yin has a yang and a yin. Okay, there's female in all of us, and there's male in all of us. Get over it. <laughs> all right, thank you. Okay. So, what, sorry, the least action process defines that you are reorganizing the nucleons in a way that doesn't involve the Coulomb barrier. It's irrelevant. Forget about it right? <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it comes around the other side. And, and so you're taking apart matter that has energy, it's captured and it's released in the reorganization of the matter on the other side. There might be a net net. Characteristics of ball lightning, you find them in crop circles and you'll find them in comet sort of impacts where the, there's the same multi-axis shear and they're producing these things. So they're concurrent, yeah, with everything else. So, so can I finish the question? Um, so I was wondering, is it potentially that one of the spheres that was welded could have um, uh, contaminants of a magnetic material and that's causing the isopotential lines to steal the plasma, increasing the heat on one side? Because you did say like, with magnets no, no, no. it can... No, what's happening is, remember, there's two things happening inside. So it's counter-rotational spin. Yeah. So you've got the, the, the vacuum pulling through your water in its gas phase, pulling through plasmoids, right? Mm -hmm. My theory on it, you know, and I think at the moment it would be brave for anyone to state an absolute, right? Because even though I've been working on it, it's still everything I think is a theory and it fits into my theory. But what I believe is that the plasmoids, when they come, when you, when you have the exhaust gas interacting with the plasmoids coming through on the inside sphere, 
there's a point, and so it's almost a sort of a linear point where the temperature changes. Mm -hmm. I believe that that is because as it's coming out of the exhaust, it interacts and to build up the charge in the plasmoids that are actually coming through. And once they're built up to charge and big enough, they steal the heat. That's my theory. You know, like they actually get to a point where they're absorbing the heat. And that's why it's on a line this way, even though they're spinning that way. A really interesting thing we found that, because um, we had the temperature probe, um, even if you stick like a Jubilee clip or something, you know, for a sampling point on the thunderstorm generator, and this is what I've been, it's been frustrating with welders and that, because they just, oh yeah, I'm just welding up a, <laughs> they think they're just welding up an exhaust gas system, but you're not. You're welding up a, a, uh, a like a violin, right? So, so the transitions have to be right, and there has to be a lot of attention to detail, so you don't have any points at which you are discharging. Right, and the, the whole annealing process is to get rid of those anomalies. Because what I wanted to do was have everyone have the same uh, thunderstorm generators we got. We intend to put uh, 25 of them around the world. I think we've got about, uh, and Bob's got, uh, I think, you know, six or seven homes for the new batch. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and we've, we've made homes for the, the, the previous batch around the world, so people do independent testing. But it's so important with the original tests that everyone's testing on the same prototype. Because we've had sort of people go, oh, look, you know, this thing doesn't work as it should. You know, and say, well, what's it made out of? Is the first question. Oh, well, I can't weld stainless steel, so I did the steel. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it's not stainless steel, so you know it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not the catalyst. Catalyst it should be, because it's got its own electromagnetic field, and it's and it's uh, not a normal field, right? And because it's so sensitive, but it's, you also when you put that on, you're changing the frequency. If you put a clip on it, or you put a bracket on it, right to Earth. That's deadly. The one good thing about uh, the generators, they're sitting on rubber, which insulates, because the plasmoids will go to earth. They'll go to Mother Earth, right? They'll go to ground, right? So, so the insulation uh, is a very important factor, not to short circuit it. And the subtle thing, we went to a lab in uh, North Carolina State University, and what they did was they added a pipe, which changed the frequency, and then they put it in the fume cabinet, and the fume cabinet is grounded to earth. Right, and they say, why does it work, Malcolm? I said, send me a picture. Because <laughs> I, I knew what had happened. You know, you don't buy a violin, or say a slide trombone, and then change the side of the slide, the length of the slide, and expect it to operate in the same manner. You know, this is tuned to the exact frequency it needs to be. If you take the 10 most abundant elements on the Earth, oh, well, when we run from the water and we do our cavitation, we find the same 10 same in abundancy, the same abundancy as you find on the Earth, as above, so below. It's absolutely extraordinary. And it's so simple. Yeah. So, but here we have the Hutchison effect, right, which is demonstrating that colour, right? Now, Solomon's Molten Sea was made of that colour, and it's also, if you like, the ready purple robes of the priests, who were insulated carts opening up the Solomon's Molten Sea, which I reverse engineered, and would you believe that there's 2,000 baths of water in Solomon's Molten Sea? But, um, but this sample is a miracle that is here and now, and I can stand up here and hold Ori Chalcum, which means three things. Atlanta exists. Otherwise, where did the Ori Chalcum for Solomon's Molten Sea come from, right? And Solomon's Molten Sea is 2,000 baths. Why? Because go back to the truth. Reject the toxic, stupidity of the metric system, hold on to the cubit, the furlong, the inch.
These are God's measurements. The plasmoid's job, which we call Shamir or EVOs, or you go back to the Sanskrit text in China that I got access to, I wanted to see the Kaaba, because that document was discovered in 1885, right, and was sent to India, language professor, it was then translated by a Tibetan Shaolin priest, right? The hand forms that he taught me are force magnification, right? So, and left and right, male and female, yep. So that, what you're doing is by changing your hand form and by flattening your hand and pulling your palm back, and you can all do it. It's an interesting thing. If you hit something with your hand, and you haven't got the hand form, you will break your hand. But if you restructure your hand, you're putting, if you hit a fist, right, that's 20 times more volume, or 20 to 30, depending on you know, what your geometry is. But say, but if you can focus all your force in one one inch punch, then in that point, you solar plexus, right, or what you're doing is a force multiplier, that's 20 or 30 times more powerful than a punch. Simple geometry, simple fact, yeah. So, so basically, the, um, and also, part of those techniques was, um, I said the frequency lifting rocks, but um, in a meditative state, my teacher would levitate himself. But the point is, is that with this, uh, with the Solomon's Molten Sea, the units of measurement, which you have to be very mindful of, and the volume relates and the angles relate to its frequency. This is a time crystal. It's an imploding structure that we lost, and you can get it from first principle. But what's the truth? The truth is that Solomon's Molten Sea is 2,000 baths, 72 hin in each bath, it's 144,000. It's the enlightened ones. The enlightened ones realise that Solomon's Molten Sea was charging the Ark of the Covenant, and the Ark of the Covenant is 2.5 cubits by 1.5 cubits by 1.5 cubits, which is 5.625 square cubits. Why did Nikola Tesla measure out the exact volume, but Nikola Tesla weighed out the copper first, right, and then made the wire from it. And, and he had the same copper block from the same, you know, because not everything's the same, from the same pot of copper pouring out two exact uh, cubes. And there's a, you have to match it. It's the subtleties. So, so what I'm saying is there's a relationship between why was it so important that before they made the Tibetan bells, and my teacher, Tibetan teacher, made me go through that process meticulously. Because then, we, once I'd got the exact volume, right, using a square, then we melted it down and made the Tibetan bell. ka -ching. Boom, right? Time, volume, frequency. The thunderstorm generator is the most sophisticated machine ever seen on the earth. Going back to my time in China, when I found the document that Oppenheimer used to build the atomic bomb that was found in a cave in China when the earthquake happened, the wall collapsed, that document was then translated and taken to America. I stayed in exactly the spot where that uh, priest, uh, monk, did all his work and had the ashram originally, and that's where I got my downloads, exactly the same time space. That's where you have sacred points. But the, the main thing is, if you go back, the further you can go back in time, as Oppenheimer did, he wrote two books on Sanskrit. Um, Tesla was taught by that, that, the guy that interpreted those scripts. Um, so, so basically, um, uh, the sequence of events was that 
For the Environmental Protection Agency, our business partners have the environmental people coming in doing samples. They then um, uh, uh, would um, uh, have the, um, uh, the results come in. They'd have to certify every like, you know, month that they're, uh, they're meeting the EPA standards. <clears throat> so we had them come in and do the, uh, the test work on our motors which confirmed that my uh, gas analyzer was meeting the same results as uh, they were getting. And then we went through a process about three months where they came in and did the samples. They then uh, uh, spoke to the, the government and to the manufacturers of their machine. And therefore, <coughs> the configuration that you saw that was tested yesterday was a configuration that they uh, uh, you know, approved of. Now, so it means that <coughs> they, they were then coming on the 28th, so we redesigned to their specification those points. Yeah, well, it's a bit two weeks before I came to this conference, as they always do, they trashed my website. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, and apologise for that too, but that happens, that's been consistent. Gotcha. This time it was a bit more malicious because not only did they <coughs> crash the website, it was a lot deeper technically. Okay. So they corrupted all the files, the videos don't play, so I had to go back and I haven't had time because I've been trying to prepare for this conference, mm -hmm. you know, to go back and fix things. So